Hi guys, Jason from Mr. Physio here in Australia. There are two most commonly mentioned statements about sitting. Sit on your sitting bones and sit with your hip all the way back into the chair, which I don't agree with at all. I'll tell you why and how to sit and stand properly. I'm gonna ask you three questions, so please let me know your answers in the comment section. I was kind of surprised how many YouTubers say sit on your protruding bones right under your hip. This is called ischial tuberosity, where some muscles are attached like hamstring tendons. I keep repeating this in my channel, tendons don't like compression. Tendons are soft tissues attaching muscles to bones. So it's always near the bony area, and there is a growing evidence that says compression is one of the most contributing factors to tendinopathy, tendonitis, like Achilles tendonitis or you know tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, that kind of thing. So this is ischial tuberosity, and your hamstring tendons are attached like this. And if you sit on it, there is a compression against the bone, right? Is it a good thing for the tendon or not? If you use your common sense, compressing the soft tissue with hard structure is likely to damage the tendon. That's why people with hamstring tendon problems can't sit at all because the tendons get compressed and it's really, really painful. Of course, not everyone gets this hamstring problem, but why would you risk yourself by sitting on it? The second question is, which one is more stable? Sitting on the pointy bone or sitting on the flat surface? When we sit for some time, our posture is likely to lean backwards like that anyway. But when you sit on the pointy bones, which is already unstable, you're more likely to go backwards like that. But when you sit on the flat surfaces like that, it is easier to maintain that posture. Which one do you think makes more sense? Is sitting really bad? It's not necessarily a bad thing to do as humans have been doing that for thousands of years. But it's a lack of movement that causes a real problems in our body when sitting for long. From that point of view, sitting with your hip all the way back into the chair is not ideal. It may be a surprise for you to know that sitting also requires core muscle activation. When you sit, you have to use your core and spinal muscles to stay upright. So we actually use our muscles even in sitting. However, when you sit against a support or back seat, then your body tends to rely on it, leaning towards that support. Then you switch off those muscle activations. It's like using back brace or postural correction band. You think they're gonna help, but in fact, they can make things worse because you don't use your muscles at all. That was an answer to my last question, which I haven't asked. But can you use your muscles in sitting with your hip all the way back into the seat? Less likely. But if you have a different answer, please let me know. So how do you need to sit? You need to sit on the pelvic floor muscles just in front of those pointy bones. And it's also in between those two bones. So when you bring your body all the way forward, arching your back like that, from there, you start to move backwards at some point, you can feel that ischial tuberosity under your hip. So the pelvic floor muscles are somewhere in between. Not all the way forward, not on the bone, somewhere in between. In this way, you can avoid compression on the hamstring tendons. And also, you need to sit on the front part of the chair. Ideally, maybe one third from the front. In this position, it's easier to avoid you know, staying in one position by switching your feet position like that. So you can alternate your feet position every 5 to 10 minutes. So it's easier to change your positions compared to sitting like this. Of course, you can change your feet position like that, but it, it doesn't change your pelvic position. Whereas when you change your feet position sitting on the front part of the chair, it can also change your pelvic position as well. As you bring your leg back, your pelvic position changes. So your pelvis keeps changing its position every 5 to 10 minutes, which is ideal. And you have more rooms to move your pelvis back and forth like that, or just side to side, like this way or that way. If you do that pelvic movement back and forth and side to side, maybe 10 times, 20 times every hour or so, that would be really, really good. So basically, you can do exercises even in sitting, using your core, spinal muscles, and pelvic floor muscles. It's the same when you're using a standing desk. You need to keep changing your position, so don't stand on your both feet too long. Put a footstool so that you can have one foot or the other up. However, be careful not to do that because 
It's gonna compress your glute tendons which I've addressed in the last two videos. So try to push your hip in so that you can keep your pelvis level. So you can alternate in between one position, two, and just, you know, stand on both feet. <laughs> so there you go. Sitting on the sitting bones doesn't make any sense. And sitting with your hip all the way back into the seat also can make things worse. Because your muscles for sitting balance is likely to be switched off. But in the end, we know it's not sitting being worse than standing. It's a lack of movement. Therefore, you need to keep changing your positions whether you sit or stand. And I hope my tips today can help a little bit. Please let me know if you have any different ideas. Thank you very much.